Hey, welcome to Daily Devotions. Today we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Um, let's go ahead and jump in to those notes. I hope that you've enjoyed this series of lessons so far. If you've missed any, feel free to go back and watch them. Verse 1 of 2 Corinthians 5. For we know that in our earthly home, this tent or this earthly body, he's talking about the body we lit, is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, or a heavenly eternal body. For in this we groan, earnestly desire to be clothed in, with our inhabitation, which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent of this earthly body grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that more mortality may be swallowed up in life. Now he who has prepared us uh, for this very thing is God, who also has given us the spirit as a guarantee. So Paul has a passionate longing to be free from an earthly body that's accompanied with sins and frustrations and weakness. Uh, he wanted to be with the Lord. He clarifies the fact uh, that the believer's hope. Our hope is for the next life is not disembodied spiritual life, but a realm, eternal, resurrected body. It's not figurative. It is literal. It is a place. So we are always confident knowing that while we are not while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident. Yes, we are pleased rather than to be absent. We, uh, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. He was saying because heaven is a better place than earth, he would rather be there with God than on earth. The judgment of Christ. Therefore, he begins to talk about uh, heavenly things. He begins to talk about things eternal. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one of us may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well-known to God, and I also trust are well-known in your conscience. Whether in heaven or on earth, he cared how we live for the Lord. He desired to be well-pleasing to him. Paul's highest goal, and ideally of all of us, is to be well-pleasing to him, but also well-pleasing in our conscience. He talks about the judgment seat. This refers to the place where the Lord will sit and evaluate believers' lives for the purpose of giving eternal rewards. Paul mentions things done in the body. This refers to the actions that are happening during time on earth, whether good or bad. For we do not commend ourselves against you, but give you the opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God, or if we are sound mind, it is for you. Those who have no integrity, Paul is saying, as Paul's opposite opponents at Corinth, have to take pride in ex external things, which can be any false doctrine ac accompanied by showy hypocrisy. Usually this means to be insane or out of one's mind, but here Paul uses the expression to describe himself as one devout, uh, devoted to truth. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And if he died for all, those that who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. So one died for all, this expression of truth of Christ's substitutionary death. The preposition for indicates he died in behalf of or in the place of all. He died for you. He died for me. Then all died. We died to our sins because he died. It was because of his death that we can that we can identify with him. We are dead to sin because of the sacrifices of Jesus Christ. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, uh, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all the things of God who was reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. 
All right, Paul is saying that he's no longer evalu- evaluating people according to external human worldly standards, but rather he's evaluating in Christ. These words comprise a brief but a very profound statement about our redemption. We have a new life, a new beginning, a new creation. All of it's in Christ. If anyone is in Christ, old things are passed away. After a person is born again, old value systems, old priorities, old beliefs, old loves, old plans are gone. Evil and sin may be still present, but we see a new perspective and have a new life and all things become new. This newness is a continuing condition of fact. The believer's new spiritual perception of everything is a constant new reality for us. We live for eternity and not for temporal things. Our new reality is that God, we want God's will in our lives. And God has proclaimed us to share this gospel of reconciliation with others. Now then, we are in ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, for he made him who knew no sin to be sent for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. An ambassador is someone who serves and represents a king from one country to another. All believers are messengers representing the king of heaven with the gospel, who plead with people of the world to be reconciled to God, their rightful king. Remember, your life is a billboard. He told them earlier in 2 Corinthians, he says, you are a living epistle. You are the ambassador. On the cross, Christ did not become a sinner. Uh, whenever, he, whenever he says, he who knew no sin, uh, for he who knew no sin to be sin for us, uh, he, Christ did not become a sinner, but remained as holy as ever. He was treated as if he were guilty of all the sins ever committed by anyone who ever believed, though he had committed none. He became the perfect sacrifice so that all of us might be in right standing with him because that's what we want we want to be able to stand before him righteous we want to be able to stand before him in right standing that's the let me pray for you jesus we want to be righteous in your sight we want to do the right things we want to think the right things we want to act the right way but we know we cannot do this within our self within our flesh so god we pray that you would allow your holy spirit to live in us and through us and be able to change us from the inside out so that we may be able to spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Have a great day. I hope that today made you a little bit better. Bye-bye.